Hello and welcome to Geobiz. We have the opportunity of catching up with Dipanshu Sharma, founder and CEO of XAD. How important is uh, location and how Im- and how XAD is using location for its purposes? And let's humanize location for for a minute here. You know, if you think of your, your mobile phone, uh, many years ago, like not that many years ago, five six years ago, there was in the GPS was the, what you had in the car. You bought a GPS device, you installed it, and you use it for turn by turn navigations. Most applications would ask you for your city state or zip code to sort of narrow down um, searches for either local, you know, searches or restaurants, what have you. Today, we don't even think about that. You know, it's so pervasive. You know, location is always turned on. Every application that we have is using location for giving you a better experience and service. Um, and there's two forms of location. One is mm-hmm. where it, location is turned on when you use the application. Mm-hmm. And the other one is location is always turned on. And let me talk about both because I think they're very, very relevant in the future. The first one is when you use it when uh, in the app experience. So let's say I want to check weather, right? If I want to check weather, I'll open the weather app, and it'll show me uh, what the weather is right now to where I am, right? That's great. That's the current use case. But in the future, if the location was always on in the background, and there was a tornado tornado hitting or was coming your way, then the weather app should be able to tell you, hey, there's a, I, I know where you are. I know the surroundings, or I know where you're heading. You're driving a car. I know where you're heading. The things are getting worse, so turn around. So we want to make sure locations capabilities are actually continually improving your quality of life. Another use case I'll give you is Uber, uh, where you know you fly at an airport, you turn your phone on, back on again, and and you say Uber, um, you know, here's where I am, and actually Uber already knows your terminal C, and you know you're in this airline, and the driver knows where you are, and they come get you. The future would be where you get off the plane, the driver would already be notified. By the time you come out of the gate, he'll be waiting for you. So ultimately, location is a way to make your life better and make it more convenient. It's already becoming quite pervasive, right, using uh, location on your mobile phones and uh, getting your things done. How do you see this uh, technology percolating into our day-to-day lives further moving forward? So several applications, right? So XAD's uh, initial applications have been more around how do we create advertising experience that is richer and better than, you know, standard ads that you see on the on the phone. A um, couple examples there. So if you uh, open a weather app or a game, usually the ads would be download this game or download this app, now, irrespective of the fact that you may never be a gamer or you may never have any you know context to the ad that was being shown. Knowing that, uh, turning, assuming location has been turned on your device, knowing that where you are right now or where you have been in the past, so that's a lot more relevant than uh, you know uh, non-location-based advertising, right? So, but advertising is one application. Right? I think the applications go beyond uh, a, a whole different scope. So, some of the examples that I talked about at the conference earlier today is understanding. You know who goes where, and how does that affect my business, right? So, um, you know, if I see traffic patterns of a population of people going to a Denny's at 1 a.m. or IHOP at 4 p.m., you know, if I'm planning a restaurant uh, that sells pancakes, like where should I put it, and what should be my timings, hours of operation? So, you know, it's it starts with a uh, revenue model, which is you know advertising, but it, it gets into business planning and making a better decisions in terms of you know business your, your own business. You all. Uh, many times uh, cited saying that uh, a location is the next big search. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you uh, tell us how that is? Yeah, so look, search is amazing. It indexes the web, right? So it indexes online the world, and you can search it. You can buy things online. So let's take just commerce, for example. But 92% of all sales happen offline. They don't happen, happen online. Nobody figured out a good solution for the 92%. And in developing countries, it's actually 95 to 98%, right? Online is like 2 to 3%. So in average, if you've got 92% of the population, uh, which is not an online population, how do you cater to them, right? Location is a way to say, okay, I know where you are. I know where you're going. Now I know how to deal with it, right? And so uh, for uh, XAD, you know, Auto has been a great great customer, you know, f- um, you would do a research on online for auto dealerships, but you mostly, you know, a lot of people know that people when they're searching online, it's not that they have intent to just go in and buy a car. The intent is really they want to see the latest car, the videos they saw an ad on TV, they just want to learn more about the model. Or there could be a really nice, you know, you know, like a Porsche, like a fanatic that just goes to Porsche website all the time frequently, right? But when you make the decision to actually visit the dealership, your context has completely changed. Now you're either going to do a test drive 
or you're gonna buy, or you're gonna at least, you know, uh, you've got now the guts to actually make a closer decision. Uh, a lot of theories were around, hey, people do the research online and they just go buy offline. Now the new theories are just people just keep doing research. They, they have no intention of buying. So location is fixing that last mile issue of, yes, they have intention of buying, they actually went there. The other example would be like, you know, if you are a luxury buyer, you went to a BMW dealership week one, week two, you went to a Mercedes dealership. Now we know you, not just that you're in buying cycle, you're in the last phase of buying cycle because you're testing different models, different cars, you know, uh, in that last cycle. And then the third piece I would say is pe- there are some things that are not searching uh, or searchable anyway. Like nobody's searching for KFC hot wings. So they're not searching for, you know, all the food, all the apparel, like tired soap. People aren't searching for tired soap. They may search for a Walmart, for a location to Walmart, but they don't search for s- products within a store. So what do you do about that, right? Uh, well, that's also ab- all about location and offline. So we're solving in need for 90% of the problem, while online is 10% of the problem. What are the new uh, opportunities and businesses that uh, are emerging that can use this uh, kind of uh, um, uh, technology tools? In short, where is the money? And, you know, I think this is the next phase of money. You know, the social was, uh, so search was first, social was second, location is going to be third. Um, where is the money going today? Let's yeah. think about that, and then we'll say where is the money going in the future. So today, if you are a marketer or an advertiser, um, take any CPG brand, you know, PNG or Unilever or a big retail like Walmart, Macy's, whatever, or a fast food chain, your channels are you're going to do a lot of TV advertising, you're going to do print or radio, and then you're going to do digital and mobile, right? So th- and in mobile, you, you spend search and social. So those are the sort of realm of things you do. People are watching less TV, and print is kind of dead. Like very few people actually pick up a magazine or buy a magazine. Radio is still around, but it's not digital radio, so it's still happening on a mobile device, you know, and more and more. Um, and so it's really not, uh, it's, it's not, there's new money coming to location, it's money is shifting from old media to new media. Now, old media had uh, billions of dollars going to it, right? And now the same marketers are saying, you know what, I'm not even watching TV, I'm doing everything on my phone, everything is personalized, customized to me, why am I spending money on things that I don't even do? And there's enough research that says millennials don't watch TV anymore. They're really, you know, uh, mo- uh, mobile and uh, internet centric. So, so to target the new generation that has actually grew up on internet, they have to change their, you know, business models. They have to change the, the media uh, model mix, is what it's called. And that's where, you know, that's where the money is. Do you see this uh, a uniform across the world? Because now mobile is uh, very pervasive. So do you see uh, this kind of money flowing into this sector throughout the world or has economic uh, placement plays a role in it? There's two factors that are big uh, from a global perspective. Exad has 10 offices, in the, you know, 14 offices, 10 globally. Um, we look at China as probably the most advanced because they uh, move to mobile very aggressively in the sense that uh, the big difference between, I think, China and India is uh, when the Chinese people moved uh, to mobile, the governments put very, very high-speed networks to support high-speed internet on every mobile device. And both telcos are owned by the government. And, you know, I go to little villages in China, I have high-speed 3G, 4G, like fastest internet, faster than anywhere else in the world. Um, you compare the same to India, you have a lot of hot, you know, sp- uh, spots of uh, coverage, and you have a lot of slow internet, you know, especially in smaller cities, and a lot of congestion in big cities. So while from a population perspective, you know, uh, it, developing countries didn't have desktop, they went straight from like TV to mobile, the actual networks underlying are very different. And so we think that, you know, in the developing world, um, that has already happened where the infrastructure is there. In the developed world, the, it's a matter of transition. And it's really, you have to shed old habits. And, you know, humans are not very good at that. So we're working hard to shed old habits. But mobile is not the end. You know, it's going to be wearables. It's going to be virtual reality. So we just need to learn as humans to move fast to new media as everybody, you know, humans beings. Like, the populations move to new media, but the marketers haven't. And that's the gap. Uh, But the good news is in developing countries, they didn't have the old media, so they're moving very fast to it.